David Hatch here again and sweltering a little bit in my south-facing office in the UK. Today I'm going to talk about toxic workplaces and what steps you can take to avoid their creation. We've looked at organisational culture before in previous videos and I've talked a lot about how to build a positive culture or workplace. But it's sometimes just as useful to consider what it looks like when the culture goes wrong how to recognise some of those signs and what can be done about it. Hi and thanks for joining me again. Today's video is all about toxic workplaces and the culture within them. From my own experience, I know that it's often quite useful to think about what has gone wrong or what doesn't work when trying to understand how to do things the right way in the future. I've certainly had my share of experiences working within a toxic business and a toxic culture. And as I've spoken about the benefits of a positive culture before, today I wanted to focus on the pitfalls and the warning signs of a negative one. And we'll finish off with a quick overview of what you can do to try and prevent this problem. The best place to start is to remind ourselves what we actually mean by culture, or at least in the context of a business or other organisation. From an academic standpoint, the definition of culture, particularly within organisations, is very much open to interpretation, and there are numerous theories seeking to explain it. However, it is generally defined as the shared behaviours and values that develop within an organisation. This can include the norms of daily life in a workplace, the way individuals conduct themselves within the business and towards each other, and even the kind of the general feeling or atmosphere within a company. So what do we mean when we say toxic in this context? A toxic workplace or culture, simply put, is one where there is prevailing negativity and a harmful quality to those behaviours, norms and values. This can create all manner of negative effects for the people who are working in such an organisation, ranging from higher stress and lower self-esteem to anxiety and really long-lasting psychological damage. It's no exaggeration to say that toxic culture can ruin lives, and not just for the employees themselves, but also their families and friends. When holidays or time with friends are taken over by that kind of anxiety, exasperation, anger, and an inability to switch off from the problems of work, from a business or boss's perspective, it is easy to write this off as an emotional element and take an attitude or an approach that basically says, I'm sorry people are unhappy, but that's got nothing to do with me and it shouldn't be affecting their work. From a certain point of view, there is some logic to this position in that an employer may not want to become embroiled in the emotional or psychological challenges being faced by their employees. It's easy to ask the questions like, why does toxic culture matter and what does it have to do with leadership or management? But to me, that way of thinking falls squarely within the traditional approaches to leadership that, as I've said many times before, I personally don't believe have any place in a modern business. Toxic culture and its resulting impacts are very much an issue for leaders to be concerned about. Even from a purely mercenary point of view, Negative culture has been seen to impact business outcomes, including poor employee retention or high turnover of staff, lowering business efficiency, and even reduced financial success. Ensuring that a workplace is safe for employees is a definite responsibility of leadership, and this certainly extends to the mental psychological protections too. There's also a clear moral implication for employers or leaders. And finally, as we've seen before, happy people produce better work and tend to be more productive. As for what this has to do with leadership, well, numerous authors have made an explicit connection between leadership and culture. It seems clear that the two concepts do interact in most organisational settings. And for me, there are two key connections. Firstly, and as I've just discussed, as a leader, it is in your best interests and those of your organisation to ensure a positive culture prevails for economic, moral and legal reasons. Secondly, in many ways, culture is a reflection of leadership. 
Many of the behaviours, norms and values in an organisation will be developed by your own words and actions as the leader, whether or not you're trying to consciously affect them. Recognising signs. So for all those reasons and more, being able to recognise the signs that your company's culture is toxic is really important. The first step as a leader, especially if you're in a CEO, MD or similarly senior position, is to be on the lookout for these signs. This is by no means an exhaustive list. I'm sure there are plenty of other warning signs, but these are probably the most obvious and tend to be the biggest red flags. Fear and or low tolerance of failure. This is a classic sign of a bad culture when employees, supervisors and even the more senior managers have an unhealthy fear of failure. And this usually goes hand in hand with a top manager or CEO who has a low tolerance for failure and tends to respond with recriminations, punishment or a public dressing down of the so-called offenders. This is bad for the culture and the well-being of the team, but it's also hugely counterproductive for a business. Mistakes and failures exist for us to learn lessons. If you treat them as so negative that they attract punishment, then you're really just encouraging people to hide them from you. The end result of that is twofold. One, you as the leader will know far less about what's going on in your team or organisation. And two, you've lost countless valuable opportunities to learn and improve. Another well-recognised sign is secrecy and poor, infrequent or non-existent communication and even hoarding or siloing of information. This kind of behaviour from leaders or management teams can be extremely toxic and corrosive to trust, respect and engagement between employees and leaders. People naturally gravitate towards like minds. And it's not at all unusual to have work friends or groups of people in your company that you naturally spend time with. It's also not necessarily a bad thing to have a bit of healthy competition between groups or teams. But a sign of toxic culture can be when this goes a step further, developing into these cliques, drama, infighting, unnecessary nitpicking and point scoring between each other. When that competition goes beyond what is healthy and starts to damage productivity, working relationships and even reputations. Bullying or harassment, these are unacceptable in any workplace. And as a leader, it is your responsibility to stamp this out immediately. So it's an obvious warning sign if this kind of behaviour is being overlooked, tolerated or even encouraged in the worst cases. As a team member, there's few things more demoralising than going to your manager with a problem only to be told that they agree with you, they sympathise with your feelings, but there's nothing they can do about it. If your own manager isn't empowered to address your issues, what does that say about your standing in an organisation? If there is no empowerment, delegation or sharing of responsibilities in your organisation or company, then this can very quickly result in lower productivity, lower morale and poor staff retention, and just the general sense of people not really caring about what they're doing. This one is a fairly obvious warning sign. If the general feeling in the organisation is one of unhappiness and lethargy, then the culture is going to be pretty poor by default. If there are constantly people leaving a business or organisation, then there's usually a reason. And the higher that number of turnover is, the worse the issue is likely to be. And finally, bad or destructive leadership. I actually hesitate to put this one on the list because these videos are really aimed at leaders and to be for your benefit. So I don't want to come off as calling you out or blaming toxic culture on you, the leaders. Having said that, in many cases, the root cause of a toxic culture can be traced back to poor leadership decisions. Being able to spot this as a warning sign in other leaders or managers within your organisation is good, but you also need to be self-aware enough to recognise it in yourself if that applies. And if you do spot it in yourself to make changes to your approaches and behaviours to correct it before it does lasting damage. Any or all of these may be present in a toxic culture, and it should also be clear that there's connections and interactions between a lot of them as well. In some examples, even a cause and effect relationship. So spotting some of them early can sometimes help you prevent further damage. Which brings us to the final part of this video, where I'm going to try and give you some brief pointers for what can be done about toxic culture. The first and best defence is to prevent the development of a toxic culture in the first place. 
If it's unfortunately too late for that and you're already starting to spot the signs of toxicity in your business, what can you do about it? Depending on which signs you've spotted, here are a few quick ideas. Be present as much as possible. Absentee leaders are sending a clear message about their lack of focus or involvement, and this will leave any culture vulnerable to negativity. If the boss doesn't care, why should I? Be there, be involved, and be conversant with your people. Evangelise a no-blame culture, and follow through on that. Make it clear that failures are simply opportunities to improve, and then follow through on those words when a failure actually does occur. Encourage teamwork and back that up by showing that you are a team player yourself. This is really tough if you're already in a kind of cliquey infighting scenario, but it doesn't make it impossible. If someone is the wrong fit or they are actively working against the culture, do something about it. On the face of it, this can be really challenging to address without stepping on what I said before about a no-blame culture and building teamwork. But sometimes there will be individuals or even other managers or senior leaders that are actively working against your positive culture and or are behaving in a way that's perpetuating a toxic one or is even just simply going against the grain of the values that you've established in the business. The first step here is always to talk to them, have an open and frank discussion and try to understand why. It's possible they might not even realise that that's what they're doing. Eventually though there will come a point where either the behaviour has changed or it's clear it isn't going to. If it's the latter then as a leader, especially a top management position such as CEO, it's your responsibility at this point to act. As hard as it may be to have that conversation If one of your team is causing harm to the others, then they've simply got to go. Hanging on to them or trying to preserve a relationship at the expense of everyone else in the business is not the right way to go. And when it comes to bullying or harassment, this is doubly, triply, a hundred times more important. Avoid gimmicks. When morale and staff turnover are an issue, the knee-jerk natural response is to try and find a quick, short-term solution to improve the general level of happiness. Classic examples would be things like buying new office furniture, ping pong tables, bean bags, new plants, as well as maybe funding a, a quick company jolly, or even just introducing a new perk like a, I don't know, a gym voucher scheme or something similar to that. These aren't necessarily bad ideas on their own, but the problem is when you do them in kind of a haphazard, ad hoc sort of way that just comes off as a careless and reactionary gesture and doesn't show your long-term commitment to making things better. It kind of sends a message of, I heard you're unhappy, here's a new chair. It doesn't really send the right signals that you've really taken the time to fully understand the challenges and consider what your people are feeling and why before coming up with a well-planned solution. I could go on, but sadly I think we're probably out of time for today. Thanks for watching this one. Please do leave me a comment and let me know what your thoughts are. And if you can also hit the like button if you enjoyed this video, that will be a big help as well. Next week I'll be talking about one of the great debates in business and management, the leader versus management debate. And you can probably already guess which side of that debate I fall on, but do hit the subscribe and the notification buttons to be alerted when I upload that one. And if you'd like to learn more about Leading with Integrity or the training, coaching and mentoring programs we provide, then you'll find some links in the description below this video. Thanks again for joining me today. Hopefully I'll see you again next week. Stay safe and be a leader, not a boss.